Hello, I'm Alpha Ares and welcome to the first edition of the Ares Academy video series. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the Tier 6 U.S. Destroyer Farragut. The Farragut is first and foremost a gunboat. Even with Concealment Expert, your detection range is higher than your Torp range. Because of this, your torpedoes will mainly be used as a last resort during island ambushes or that always fun kamikaze rush of a battleship. The replay that you are seeing highlights the strong points of the ship and how to play it effectively. I only had a 10 point captain during this match which means it will only be stronger if you have a full 19 point captain. Like any destroyer, the first thing you want to do is identify your enemies. The Farragut is the first in the US destroyer branch that can see tier 8s. This means you will have to be ever cautious of radar and higher tier gunboat destroyers like Akazuki. Fortunately for us, matchmaking was in our favor during this match. Once the first couple of enemies are detected, I put myself in a position to try and ambush them. The friendly destroyer to my left is currently spotting, so I take advantage of this by popping my smoke. Because there are no radar ships in this match, I can use my smoke generator a bit more aggressively. Keep in mind though that sitting still in smoke, especially in higher tier matches, is bound to attract torpedoes, so be prepared to move quickly if necessary. Like most US ships, the shell arcs are very high. It will take some practice to get used to the shell flight times and where exactly to aim and lead your targets. However, once you get the hang of it, you can really start to see the power of the Farragut's guns. Thankfully, I had some teammates that were able to keep this cruiser spotted and allowed me to maintain constant fire on her. Notice how I don't stay completely zoomed in on my target or completely still in smoke. By zooming out after volleys, it allows me to maintain my situational awareness and keeps me on guard of any incoming threats. With nothing else being detected or any immediate threats, I'm able to safely burn down the enemy cruiser. By paying attention to the minimap, I can also see that the enemy destroyer looks to be retreating. Always pay attention to your minimap and where enemies have been spotted and their last known positions because more than likely, it will save your life. After helping secure the cruiser kill, I begin to move out of smoke and then see that the enemy destroyer has in fact re-engaged. As I begin firing at the enemy destroyer, I activate speed boost. This helps throw off the enemy's aim and makes me a more difficult target to shoot at and or torp. Unfortunately, the high arcs of the US shells also make it more difficult for me to land hits on the enemies. With my team being in a good position, the first destroyer turns to run. At the time, a second enemy destroyer joins the fight, so I decide to cease fire and regain stealth in order to reposition and to allow time for my smoke consumable to come off cooldown. As I move to engage the two destroyers, an enemy battleship appears to my right and I'm actually in a good position to try and ambush her. Because one of the enemy destroyers is currently low on health and I have teammates still in the area, I decide to disengage from this fight to pursue the battleship. While performing moves such as this, make sure you know your target. In this case, my target is a German battlecruiser with very strong secondaries, which means I don't want to get too close. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get into a good torpedo angle, and instead I have to use my guns. But since the enemy battleship is being spotted by a teammate, I once again am able to throw my smoke and begin shelling the target. I can also see on the minimap 
that the two enemy destroyers from earlier are not in a position to tort my smoke or otherwise engage me while in my smoke screen. This means I can continuously fire on the battleship. I do fire torps just in case the enemy continues to move in a straight line, but he instead turns away and avoids the torps. You would be surprised how many battleship captains don't use any evasive maneuvers and instead sail in straight lines. Had this captain done that, I would have had an easy torp kill. But since he turns away and dodges the torps, I maintain fire with my guns while zooming in and out again to keep an eye on my surroundings. With help from my team, we're able to gun down the battleship without taking any return fire. Once the battleship is sunk, I am free to push the enemy base. I again notice on the minimap that the two enemy destroyers from earlier are still alive and appear to have retreated back towards their base. I am once again in a good position to try and catch the destroyers off guard and set up an ambush. As I move around the islands, however, I notice shells coming out of a smokescreen, and because the Agile is already detected, I know this to be the other enemy destroyer. It's a destroyer that I can outgun and easily defeat. I send a torp wall into his smoke in an effort to either sink her or force the ship out of the smoke. The latter works, and I am in per perfect position to gun the enemy ship down. Even some pretty nice torp beats by the enemy destroyer won't save her. The Agile even joins the fight near the end, but it's too late. I sink the first destroyer and continue to move around the island in an attempt to reposition myself to take out the second. By the time we re-engage the second destroyer, all of our guns have rotated or, and are in position to fire. It only takes two volleys to sink the enemy. As I sink the destroyer, I go full reverse in an effort to dodge the incoming battleship volley. Luckily, I only take minor damage and survive while most of his shells miss. The Texas will pay for that miss shortly. Because the battleship is sailing away and our torp range is limited, I am once again using the guns. Knowing the Texas has a very long reload and the player has already missed once, I take my chances by staying detected and continuing to fire. Once I see the second volley from Texas, I steer my ship in an attempt to dodge. I take minor damage, but most of the shells miss. However, any future direct hits will likely result in our death. But because this Texas has now missed two volleys, I decide again to take my chances. As the Texas is running away, I fire torpedoes 
just in case he decides to turn one direction or another to use the rest of his guns. Unfortunately, or rather fortunately, he continues to sail straight, which allows me to just maintain constant pressure with my guns while having minimal fire being returned back at me. A good tactic to use here is to vary your speeds. By slowing down for a few seconds and then going full speed ahead, I again force the Texas to misjudge his volley and to miss. At this point, the Texas is at my mercy as he's already used his damage control party. Because of this, I end up setting multiple fires on him and essentially burn him to the waterline for the relatively easy kill. As the Texas is slowly burning to death, we come face to face with the enemy aircraft carrier and a squadron of bombers. I quickly re-engage my anti-aircraft guns by using the hotkey P by default uh, and hope to defend myself against his planes. Luckily we are able to dodge the bombing strike and are now able to focus all of our attention on the enemy aircraft carrier. He tries to run, but we maintain a constant firing with our guns until we are able to get into torp range and unleash a deadly volley of torpedoes. The carrier pretty much has no chance at this point, and we just whittle him down until he dies. And then it's GG's, we finish with a Kraken, five kills, and a win. Here is how to outfit your Farragut with appropriate modules, upgrades, and captain skills. In module slot 1, take main armaments mod 1. In slot 2, either damage control 1 or the propulsion mod 1, depending on your captain skills. In slot 3, aiming systems, and then in slot 4, the propulsion mod. Because Farragut is a gunboat, generally you'll want to use the B hull, because with the C hull you actually lose a turret. However, with update 0.8.0 on the horizon and the guaranteed influx of aircraft carriers, you may wish to take the C hull. If you take the C hull, make sure to swap your speed boost with defensive fire in order to maximize its effectiveness. Now for my primary captain skills. First, take priority target to know just how much stuff really wants to kill you. Second, last stand. Third, take survivability expert since you will be primarily a gunboat. And fourth, take concealment expert. Depending on your choice of B or C hull, your secondary talents are as follows. Demo expert for the increased fire chance, and IFHE for helping dealing with higher tier enemies, and finally expert marksman for the buff to the guns. If you chose the sea hull, then take BFT and AFT to maximize your anti-air capabilities. If you are comfortable in your destroyer, one can also take preventative maintenance instead of priority target. The choice is yours. The Farragut is unique and has several viable builds and styles, but the one shown in this video is what I use. Feel free to experiment and find the best combination of skills for your playstyle. I hope you enjoyed this video and the first lesson in the Ares Academy.